Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this is going to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Combo Tutorial video, and this time it's going to be something a bit special for the channel, because it's been a while since I've touched this deck, even though it is the founding father of this channel, and even people that have found the channel more recently still come up to me and talk to me about Dragoonity combos that they've seen on the channel. It's definitely the thing I'm known the most for, World Chalice being the thing I'm known like second most for, uh, but this is definitely the channel's heritage, and so the fact that we're able to start messing around with some combos, even though the deck isn't that good in the metagame, is, you know, always nice. But so, what I'm going to be showing you today is a three-card Dragoonity combo. It's very open-ended with the cards that you need to start it off, but I'll get into that in a second. It is a three-card combo that makes three interruptions for your opponent to deal with, and then also summons a Morphage Goliath, so your opponent is not able to use their extra deck. And so... This is possible specifically because we have Hieratic Seal Celestial Spheres dropping in dual power, which officially releases today, the day this video goes out. And why that was important was because Dragoonity Sinidus, the new support wing beast that we got, essentially replaces Ducks as the best de facto starter for the deck to get extra resources into circulation because it equips from deck. Uh, and then it just has really strong interactions with setting up Barca plays, which Barca became the best synchro in the Dragoonity arsenal because of Koos being released. So those worked really well hand in hand to step up into getting more cards for plays uh, pretty early on. But Synodus locks you to only summoning dragons from your extra deck, and uh, we didn't have any dragon link that was a proper link to to summon that had proper downward pointing arrows to abuse the cards in the right way, uh, the cards being Guard Dragons, because Guard Dragons far outshine Hieratic Seal Celestial Sphere's ability to be tributed and summoned from deck. Uh, I've made combos with that ability in, uh, you know, as a factor in the past, but knowing Romulus exists, and then also having the Guard Dragons in the form of LP, Pisty, and Agrapan, uh, they just out all of those cards, like, individually outclass what Celestial Spheres does uh, as far as a combo piece, uh, but it's needed at this point, because it is the only Dragon Extra Deck monster that has the right arrows for what we're going to be doing in this combo. But so, this is a three card combo, like I said, I'm going to make three interruptions, and it's going to put Goliath on the board. Uh, and it's a three card combo, uh, it's super open ended. The one I'm going to be showing you is Ravine plus two tuners. Um, you can have Ravine plus Sinidus plus tuner, you can have Ravine plus tuner plus Dark Worm, you can have Ravine. Senator's Dark Worm, you can have Ravine, Senator's Zephyros, you can have Ravine, Tuner, Mistleton, you can have Ravine, Senator's Mistleton. Like, you can have all these different card combinations. You don't even need Ravine. You can have Senator's uh, Tuner, Dragon Shrine, or Foolish. Uh, you can have Senator's Tuner, Mistleton. You can have uh, Cards of Consonance interactions where you have Senator's, a Dragoonity card to discard, and the Cards of Consonance to Tuner away to draw cards. Um, so, like, that one is, you know, is very open-ended. It's arguably the most open-ended combo in terms of what you need going into it that we've had since Link Format took hold because it was really hard to try and amass resources with this deck uh, because the links that you were trying to go into just weren't that amazing, and so it pretty much locked the deck into making, like, Omega Spams, which meant that you were really hard-locked into certain parts of the, uh, the moving parts of the engine being the only real starters and extenders like you couldn't start with instant fusion or garuda anymore because you couldn't make a tum with those it had to be mistleton soul charge or monster reborn stuff like that it became very limiting uh but so this one is actually very open-ended and then once we get dragoonie knight romulus whenever we get that card hopefully it's before 2021 um these be these all become two card combos because romulus searches divine lance and the only reason we're using a third card in this combo sequence is because we need Hieratic Seal Celestial Spheres on the board at the same time as two level four lower dragons. Where if Romulus exists, we're able to get to that with one less card because of Divine Lance being searched by Romulus' summon. But anyway, like I said, super open-ended. So instead of gassing about it for more time, I'm just going to show you how it works. So in this instance, Ravine plus two tuners. You're going to Ravine, discard a tuner, add Senatus to your hand. If you had Senatus plus a tuner in your hand, you would just discard tuner, add a tuner. Uh, basically, we just want to be abusing Barca as much as possible with three tuners in circulation. Um, it doesn't really... Uh, once like once we get Romulus, it doesn't matter if we have three tuners at the beginning of the combo. You just need two, uh, because Romulus gets you to the third tuner. But anyway, so you go Senatus, equip Kus from deck, Kus special summons itself, and then we go into Barca. Barca is 100% the best Dragoonity Synchro in the game now, uh, because Vajrayana doesn't equip three. Vajrayana is not Soul Charge. And uh, we're going to be doing this again this turn. You saw two Barkas in my extra deck. We're going to be doing this again. Uh, it's it's ridiculous how Barka just set this like sets this up. And then Sinidus 
And Koos has just a really strong interaction for starting combos in terms of uh, getting good resource management because you get so much in play off of just two cards. But so, like we said, we're going to make the Seal of Celestial Spheres. It is the only card we could summon here that would do what it needs to do because Sinidus is hard locking us to only summoning dragons from our extra deck. Um, now, you could have done this combo in the past, uh, like before dual power with Land Phalinkus, but you couldn't be summoning Senatus. You have to normal summon ducks and equip a Coos from Grave, which meant that the combos became a lot more involved. Uh, you had to, like, have four card combos to make that work, but now it's kind of reasonable because you can do it with three. But so, we have the two tuners left on the board, so we're going to make those into the cards that outshine Celestial Spheres' effect to summon from deck, LP, and Pisty just make this card outdated in terms of what its effect is, because we're not going to be doing anything like what old Dragoonie combos used to do. Like, old Dragoonie combos, when Hieratic Seal was announced, would do things like make Gaydurg, add Blackwing, Steam the Cloak, discard Steam the Cloak, make Celestial Spheres, and then tribute Celestial Spheres for Steam, and then summon Red Men from deck, uh, and then go from there. We're not we, we're skipping all that like nonsense and rigmarole, because it's unneeded. And, like I said, once Romulus comes out and replaces this summon... Uh, you get Divine Lance to hand, and that means the combo takes one less card in all of its forms. But so, Red Med from deck, you're going to use its effect, Special Summon Phalanx, and then from here, we are going to go into Agrapane. We're going to go into Agrapane with the Hyrax Seal Celestial Spheres and the Red Med, and we're going to summon Agrapane over here because we want the zone to be pointing downward. Now, we're going to use Agrapane's effect, we're going to summon Gaiderg from our extra deck, without properly synchro summoning it so it cannot be revived that is something you need to be mindful of and it is something that is going to be addressed again later in the combo sequence but so you're going to add gator uh you're going to add zephyros off of gator rather and then discard it uh if you have other cards in hand like if you started with dark worm dark worm i really want to play dark worm and gate zero because you can summon dark worm get gate zero and that's a free discard for gator for like something like garuda or whatever there's a lot of ways to like play this deck now um, and they only get, you know, better once we get Romulus, because then that completely changes a whole different dynamic of the deck, but that's a completely different video topic that I've been meaning to make for a while, and I will not waste any time talking about it here. But anyway, so you've summoned the Gaiderg, you've got the flanks on the field, we're going to make the first interruption in the form of a Crystal Wing. You could make Borlode Savage Dragon here. Um, truthfully, you could. Uh, you would only be equipping a, uh, the Hieratic Link from Grave, so it would only have two counters on it, and only be going up by, uh... What, nothing? That thing has zero attack? Yeah, nothing. So it gets no attack bonus, and it only has two negations on it. But, uh, but like, Crystal Wing here just makes just as much sense, honestly. But so, we have not used Pisty, so we're going to use Pisty. We're going to summon Red Med from the grave. And we're going to then use Red Med here to revive Koos. Now, those are our two Red Med revives um, that, like, uh, that have been super impactful here. Uh, there's something I'm going to bring up a little bit later uh, that I'm hinting at, but notice how we've been bringing back the tuner each time off of the red med, and that the red med's level doesn't really matter, or where the red med goes doesn't really matter. Anyway, so we have one, two, three cards we can go into the Saryuja with. This combo takes 14 extra deck spots, by the way. <laughs> In case you didn't notice, we're running through our extra deck pretty quick, uh, but I believe it's worth it for at least the majority of matchups that you'd be playing in the... Uh, in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! But so, since we've turned the guard dragons off by linking them away so we can summon non-dragons again, Zephyros bouncing Red Med, summoning the Zephyros. We have Koos on the board, which means it can treat itself as a level 4 tuner for the summon of another Dragoonity Knight Barka. Now we're going to summon it all the way over in this right-hand zone, and that actually matters. But so we're going to use Barka to get our three tuners back. And we're going to basically just Soul Charge. Again, this is the second time we've essentially Soul Charged for free in this turn structure. And this is going to be relevant. But so, Phalanx, Special Summons all the way over here. And then we're going to Special the other two tuners that we have uh, access to over into these zones. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make Dark Matter. But I've already used Agar Pain. How am I going to make Dark Matter? Am I going to overlay with the Crystal Wing and then revive it with Red Med? No. No, I am not. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the two Kooses away, because these are two level 4 or lower non-dragons that are not tokens, into Twin Triangle Dragon. And then I'm going to use Twin Triangle Dragon's effect, paying 500 life, to revive one of the Barkas that is in my graveyard. Summoning it to this zone that is open, that is being pointed to by Twin Triangle Dragon. So, at this point we've got the two Barkas out, and those are two level 8s, meaning we can go into 
our galaxy eyes and into our dark matter. So we're going to dark matter. Uh, utilizing dark matter's effect, we are going to send three specific cards. We're going to send Goliath and Arc Brave, obviously, because that's part of the Goliath package. But we are going to also send Mistleton. Now, Mistleton is a good combo piece for the deck, so it's worth you running, obviously. Uh, but we need to send it specifically here because the only level 6 we have in Grave that can be revived with Red Medan is Gaederg, but it cannot be revived because it was not properly Synchro Summoned, as I mentioned earlier. You can only revive Synchro Monsters or Extra Deck Monsters in general if they were properly summoned with their proper summoning uh, mechanic first. So we're going to send Mistleton because that's going to be a card we revive off of Red Medan. But so... The resolution of Dark Matter happens, the opponent banishes three. Uh, at this point, if your opponent's playing a Thunder Dragon deck, uh, you did just give them uh, Roar and Dark uh, and a Mulligan with Hawk. <laughs> so, like, they do have a lot going for them, but uh, the only way they can out Goliath is with Thunder Dragon Duo or just hitting it with a Bigfoot if, they, uh, if they're playing Bigfoot uh, as a danger monster. Uh, so, like, it becomes really hard for them to out the, uh, the Goliath uh, through the three interruptions. And it's, uh, I'll just talk about it later as, uh, as the board, uh, gets fully completed. But so, we could just special summon this red meta out of our hand by, uh, by getting rid of Saryuja. Uh, but we want the Saryuja to be in Grave. We don't want to banish it. But luckily, Twin Triangle Dragon is a dragon, so we'll special summon the red med here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to link away with the Dark Matter and the Saryuja into Hieratic Seal Celestial Series number two, because this thing does have a relevant effect on board, which I will get into. Uh, but so we're summoning this because we want the Saryuja to be engraved as well, because we want it to boost our Boreload Savage Dragon quite a bit. And we want to open up zones for our stuff. But so we're going to revive that Mistleton because it's the level six, and then we are going to go into Boreload Savage Dragon. And Boreload Savage Dragon is then going to equip the Saryuja from Grave, so it goes up to 44. Uh, and has four negations on it, potentially. So, we have Crystal Wing, which is a monster negate. We have Boreload Savage Dragon, which is a negate anything. And then we have Hieratic Seal Celestial Spheres, which contribute itself and bounce a card. Um, and, like, that is important for a very specific reason. I would probably not actually make this card if my opponent didn't banish uh, Thunder Monsters. Because of the fact that, like, leaving the Saryuja and the Dark Matter is arguably more valuable. Uh, but so, you end your turn, and you get back the the Goliath in the standby phase with the Arc Brave, and so now your opponent is under Goliath and has to play through two hard negations and then the Hieratic Seal Celestial Spheres. Now, what the Hieratic Seal Celestial Spheres is doing here is because, like I said previously, the only way that uh, Thunder Dragons, uh, Danger Thunder, which is a really hard matchup because of Dark Matter banishing their cards and giving them free roar, searches, uh, free uh, uh, dark, or free roar summons, free dark searches, and uh, a hawk mulligan if they want it, uh, is that they get to search Thunder Dragon Duo, and Thunder Dragon Duo being summoned is 2800 and can attack over Goliath, uh, which is, you know, not good for us. And with the board as it is with just Savage Dragon and Crystal Wing, there's no way to really respond to that off of this combo other than having Hieratic Seal of Celestial Spheres in play, because they summon the Thunder Dragon duo, or they banish a bunch of cards for Chaos Dragon Levianir, um, and then don't use the effect uh, to try and run over the Goliath, you just bounce it by tributing the uh, Celestial Spheres, and then you bounce it to their hand, their battle phase has been, you know, voided, and now the only other way they have to out this card is if they are playing Danger Bigfoot, which some people are playing, some people aren't, because it's not really a combo piece or an extender, uh, like in like an optimal fashion, but some people are playing it. They just have to get to it and uh, utilize it. But even then, you have Crystal Wing <laughs> and a Borlode Savage Dragon, so you can negate the Bigfoot as well. If your opponent's not going into the extra deck, these negations are going to be very, uh, very premium in terms of what you're able to hold them for. But so this obviously isn't that strong against Sky Striker because Sky Striker they're literally playing against one negation. They're playing against Goliath and one spell negation. Um, which is why if my opponent doesn't banish Thunder Dragon Monsters from, uh, from their deck, I believe I would just end on the Saryuja and the Dark Matter still on the board, uh, with the two negates, just because that's more oppressive, and then Goliath gets summoned somewhere else. Like, you just have a lot more stuff that they have to, you know, deal with, because Celestial Spheres, its bounce doesn't really do anything against Sky Striker. Crystal Wing negates, like, uh, Ray or Kagari in certain points, but it doesn't really 
do anything that amazing. It just turns off a Gagari for the turn, so they don't get another spell activation. But they can turn off Goliath with Widow Anchor pretty easily, and they just have to play through the one negate. So leaving a bigger board overall is uh, is just a little bit more impactful in my mind. But against Salomon, great. Um, I would still probably leave the Saryuja as well, but against Thunder, this is the full-fledged you know, form of the combo because you need to have the way to out them summoning Thunder Dragon Duo that you just gave them a free search for. Uh, and then uh, and then being able to out that so they don't out your Goliath because then it's an auto win at that point because Red Eyes can just revive Dark Matter and that's a ton of damage going face. Uh, it's pretty, pretty hard for you to justify not dying in that situation, but I digress. But so that is the current Dragoonie combo that I've been messing around with. Like I said, once Romulus comes out, it becomes a two card combo, uh, but God knows when that card's coming out. I mean, it took us literally two years to get Hieratic Seal Celestial Spheres, almost. It took us a year and a half. So if we take a year and a half to get Romulus, then we get it in 2020, at the end of 2020. Nice. Neat. Just in time for Dragoonie to continue being irrelevant. But anyway, uh, that's basically the combo. Uh, I've ranted a little bit in terms of uh, th like uh, reasonings and stuff a little bit too long, but I tend to do that anyway. You kind of know that's sort of the... That's more of the spiel around here. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As per usual, like, comment, subscribe. If you're new here, I'd love to welcome you on board. Again, hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss an upload. If you want to see more videos from me, I would love to welcome you on board to the channel. Discord links and Twitch links where I live stream are in the description down below if you find a use for them. Because I do live stream at least twice a week. And if you want to watch me play different decks, that is a place to do so. And the Discord is where we chat. So, come chat forehead but anyway as i've already said thanks for watching as usual thanks for your time as always guys and take care i'll see you in the next video